All right, we're going to look at genetic engineering and gene therapy from the perspective of Christianity. When we look at this from Christianity, there are three important things that we need to take into consideration. These are the concepts of the sanctity of life, stewardship and compassion. Sanctity of life comes from the book of Genesis chapter 2 verse 7 where we find out that God created man in his image, male and female, he created them. Human life is imbued with a sense of being sacred, so it needs to be protected at all costs. And then of course we have stewardship in Genesis 1, we find that God gives humanity dominion or stewardship over all of the earth and all of the creatures within the earth. And then in the Gospel accounts, we have the teachings of Jesus Christ, uh, who teaches us to have compassion for those who are sick and thirsty and hungry and homeless. Now, there are many disagreements in Christianity, it leads for really good divergent analysis. So how can we have one teaching and lots of different people believing lots of different things from that one core teaching? But there are two main things that Christians will agree on when it comes to gene therapy and genetic engineering. The first of these is that all our skills, all our intellect, all our medical reasoning is God-given. And we have a duty to use that to relieve the suffering of ourselves and of other people. And the second one comes from a long-standing history in Christianity to help those less fortunate. If you look at the monastic communities within Christianity, you will see a history of hospitals and schools and aged care and charities that are designed purely to help the people less fortunate than ourselves. However, churches do disagree on one main question, and that is when an embryo achieves full human status. For most Protestants, full human status can come after 14 days. Okay, This is because they believe the soul is something that develops over time. For most Catholics, they believe that humanity is sacred from the moment of conception. Okay, so nothing can be touched from the moment of conception. Now, arguments for and against gene therapy and genetic engineering. First of all, we'll have a look at um, somatic cell therapy. So arguments for stewardship. We are ultimately in a position where we're supposed to look after the planet, the people within the planet and the animals within the planet. Somatic cell therapy can prevent diseases, so it is a stewardship. And in that same vein, it is also compassionate. Jesus healed the sick. Somatic cell therapy heals the sick. Now, going against somatic cell therapy, some Christians believe we are going too far. This is Tower of Babel time, Genesis 3, we will be like God. We are playing God. Germline therapy. Now germline therapy, the arguments for could be the same as the arguments for somatic cell therapy in the idea that we are stewards, we're developing treatments. This is a good thing, it's going to cure things. And many Protestants will believe that the embryos that are younger than 14 days old don't have full human status yet so they can support the genetic manipulation of embryos to ensure of course that they do not suffer in the future. Now, arguments against are saying that uh, also you can use the same argument, stewardship, we don't know the risks. And another argument against it is that it's expensive, so it may only be available to wealthy people, which of course goes against the Christian concepts of justice. Okay, arguments for save your siblings. Well, save your siblings, um, one of the main arguments could be, of course, in Christianity we believe in a sanctity of life, that all life is sacred. So this argument could be used to support save your siblings because it is saying, saying like Jesus, we're going to heal and cure sick people. Um, the argument against it, of course, is that the principle of the sanctity of life covers all of human life, including the child that is created in order to save their sibling and one of the main arguments is the potential psychological harm that could befall the savior sibling. Christian arguments for designer babies, as long as it's not just purely for cosmetic enhancement, it could prevent disease. This again is a good thing, we have stewardship and we have compassion. And of course, uh, the arguments against though are all along the lines of if it is for enhancement, the commodification of babies. There are a number of quotes doing the rounds on screen here. They're really important, pay attention to them.
Embryology. Christian arguments for embryology are that we are making medical breakthroughs. We're finding cures for diseases. To some people it would say that we have a duty to use our God-given intellect to research for cures for diseases. The arguments against embryology are that we should not create embryo embryos purely for research purposes. Um, that ultimately, if we believe that human life is sacred from the moment of conception, then any research on embryos is completely wrong and abhorrent, and it is selfish. The Roman Catholic Church teaches in the Dignitas Personae to create embryos with the intention of destroying them, even with the intention of helping the sick, is completely incompatible with human dignity.